still checking in the place, still cold. Moving in the way, no place, no snow. Straight chilling with my niggas and shiver. Thinking about Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Phobia here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be doing another new Vita tutorial. Since I haven't done any Vita tutorials in the past, I, since I just got my first one, you're going to be seeing a lot of Vita tutorials from me recently. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. But this tutorial is going to be on how you actually set up SD2 Vita on your Vita. Um, so the, the only thing that you really need as a prerequisite for this is you need a jailbroken Vita. If you have not jailbroken yours yet, I will leave a link to the vitahacks.guide or the vita.hacks.guide site in the description where you can jailbreak it. They have a really simple tutorial, uh, but you can do this on 3.60 all the way up to 3.73. And so it makes no difference what firmware you're on. This should work on everything. So what you're going to need on your PC to make this work is these four things. First of all, you're going to need Win32 Disk Imager. All these links will be down in the description. Just go ahead and download all the programs and image files and everything that you're going to need. Once you have them downloaded, make sure you install Win32 Disk or Win32 Disk Imager and make sure you put a know where it's at just so you can access it later. But we're going to need that. Auto Plugin. This is going to be what we use to enable SD2 Vita on our Vita. The next thing is zzblank.image. This is going to be what we're going to write to our SD card to make it be readable by the Vita. And the last thing that you're going to need is a Vita backup. So what this is going to be is just a backup of your entirety of your storage on your Vita. You're going to want to keep this for future reference just in case anything ever happens like your SD card corrupts or something to that effect where you can't boot anymore. You should be able to copy these files back over to your SD card or your memory card and get back started like that. So to make this backup, we're going to start with this first since it's the most important part. You're going to go on your Vita, and the first thing you're going to want to do is open up Vita Shell. If you do not have Vita Shell, you can go ahead and find a VPK online that you should that you can install, but it should be installed by default with every CFW that you install. It will also work on Molecular Shell if you have that, so either one of those should be good for this. Once you launch Vita, Vita Shell, just go ahead and press Start on your Vita and go down to the setting that says select button. If that's on USB, you're gonna to wanna to change that to FTP. Once you change it to FTP, close the settings menu and press select on your Vita. That should pop up a window that says FTP server is now running at, and then your IP and a port. So what you're gonna do next is go ahead and load up your FTP client. I use FileZilla, but you can use Cyberduck or WinSCP or anything that you want. Uh, Cyberduck is for Mac, by the way, for you Mac users out there. But go ahead and load this up, and in the host name, you're just going to go ahead and put your IP address that showed up on VitaShell, and you're going to go ahead and put that port, which is after the colon. So everything before the colon goes in host, everything after, so these four numbers, the default is 1337, you're just going to put that into port and click Quick Connect. I was already connected, so I'm going to abort, but it should look like this when you connect. This is going to be all of the storage devices on your Vita. But the one that we are interested in is UX0. This will be your memory card or your internal storage if you have that. So just go into UX0 and what you're going to do is make a new folder somewhere. I just called mine Vita Backup, um, but you can make it on your desktop documents, doesn't matter. Just make a folder and what we're going to do is come over to the FTP, click in the folder, and press Control A. That would be Command A for you Mac guys. But what will this will do is select everything in this folder, and then what you're going to want to do is just drag and drop it into that folder that you created. Or if your FTP client doesn't support drag and drop, you're going to browse to wherever you, you made that folder and right click and click download. This will take a while depending on how many games you have installed. I have no games and it still took me around 5 minutes or so to back this up. But this is crucial. You need to have this backup. So wait however long it is to get it done. And once that's done, we are done on our Vita for now. There's not, or I, actually I take that back. We need to copy over our auto plugin. So where you're gonna do that is in UX0, just go to your data folder. This is where people usually install applications. I have a bunch in here, but you might not have these. It doesn't matter, just drag and drop it in here anyway. So take your auto plugin, drag and drop it here. And mine's already here, so I'm gonna overwrite it. It should take a couple seconds to upload. 
Once that's done uploading, we can go back out of this and now we are done on our Vita for the moment. So the next thing that we're going to do is get yourself your SD card and either plug it into your PC if you have a uh, micro USB or micro SD card slot. But if you do not have a micro SD card slot, you're going to need a USB to micro SD adapter. Uh, if you don't have one of those, you can buy one on Amazon for about eight bucks. They're really cheap. So once you plugged in your memory card, we're going to go ahead and or your SD card, we're going to go ahead and open up Win32 Disk Imager. And this is what the program's going to look like. It's very basic, but it's we'll get the job done. That's all we need. So next, go into this PC, and what we're going to do is just make sure... Sorry, I don't know why this is still here. We're going to make sure out of these drives what drive letter our SD card is. So mine you can clearly see is USB drive H. That I'm using a USB to SD adapter, so that's why it shows up as USB. But this is my card. It's a 64 gig card. You just need to figure out which one of these it is because what the operation that we're about to do will vi will wipe your drive. So you definitely don't want to dri wipe any of your internal drives. So find the drive letter. Mine's H. It's already oh, it's already selected on H, and H is only the only one that actually shows up for me. But if you have an external USB uh, hard drive or a USB drive at all, it will show up here. So just make sure you select the right drive. So next, you're going to go ahead and click the little file icon, and it should open this. You're going to browse to wherever you downloaded that ZZ blank image. I put mine on my desktop, so I'm just going to double click that, and it should show up here. So we don't actually have to change anything else here. All we have to do is click right. So it will warn you that it's going to uh, overwrite it. So we're going to go ahead and click yes, and now you can see write successful. And now if we look over at our USB drive, you'll see that it is no longer actually formatted and it shows up as XFAT. That is important. You want to make sure that it looks like this. If it does look like this, you're going to right click, click eject, and we're going to go ahead and remove our SD card and plug it back in. So it's going to show up with a window like this. You need to format the disk drive for it to work. So the next step, what you have to do is just click format disk. We're going to leave it on XFAT. Do not make it, make it NTFS. We're going to format it as, as XFAT. And the allocation unit size, we can leave as default. If you have an SD card that is larger than 128 megabytes, you're going, or gigabytes, sorry, you're going to want to select this right here, the 60, 64 kilobytes. But we're just going to use the default since mine's a 64. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it Vita. It really doesn't matter. And then you're just going to click Start. So now we're going to click OK on that, and the format is complete. So now it should show up back again in your this PC as an actual drive. So the next part that we have to do is we actually have to go back to our Vita. Um, okay, no. So once you see that your USB is back here, you're going to want to go one more time back into here and we're going to open up the Vita backup folder that you made earlier. So what you're going to want to do now is just copy everything from this folder over into your SD card. This is what's actually going to allow your system to boot once we complete this process and this step is very crucial because if not your device will not boot after we do this mod. So go ahead and wait for this to copy and I'll be back with you guys once it's done. All right, now that that operation is finished and everything is now done copying over to our SD card, and make sure everything is here. You should have all of your files, including the id.dat and the icon layout. If you have all of your files here, we're going to go back to this PC and just eject it. Since we were just writing to it, it's just a safe practice to do this so it doesn't become corrupted if you remove it. So the next step to this process is going to be to install the SD to Vita adapter. So put the micro SD card in the adapter and then you're going to put it into the game slot on your Vita. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And once you have that in, what we're going to have to do is restart our Vita. So go ahead and just reboot it real quick. If you do not have Enzo where you have a permanent exploit, you're going to have to re-exploit once you reboot your Vita. But it, this will work on Hencore or anything like that, if, even if you don't have Enzo. Alright, so now that we're switched over to the Vita, the next thing that we're going to want to do is open up Vita Shell. So the reason why we're doing this is we need to actually install Storage Manager, which was that auto VPK that or the auto plugin that you downloaded before. 
Now that we're in Vita Shell, you're going to go navigate to that data folder where we copied it. Um, it should show like this whenever you first open it. Just go into UX0 and then data and you'll see auto plugin.vpk. We're going to install this. Should only take a second. Click yes on that prompt that shows up. It just means that it's a homebrew application that can modify your system. No big deal. Alright, now that that's installed, go back to your home screen and you should now have auto plugin on your home screen. We're going to go ahead and launch auto plugin. We'll click OK to close Vita Shell. And we're going to wait for it to show up. Okay, we got the boot screen. So next thing you're going to want to do is go to the plugins. Install S or plugin for SD to Vita. So we're going to press that. And you can see your SD to Vita must be ready. This is why we copied over those folders because if not, your system will not boot. So I'm going to go ahead and press circle, but it will be X for you. Uh, I just have a Japanese Vita. Alright, so once the plugin is done and finished installing, you should come to this screen. It'll be the configuration manager for the actual SD to Vita plugin. <clears throat> and your settings should look like mine. These are the default settings, but if you did the update for auto uh, plugin or anything like that, it may be changed. Just make sure that your uh, settings look like mine here. If they look like mine here, just go ahead and click triangle and it will save the up or the config and we're going to go ahead and click X or OK depending on what it says and now it'll say your PS Vita will restart once we click OK you're going to want to take out your actual memory card when the Vita is off so before it actually restarts make sure you take out your official Sony memory card if you have one if you're just we're just using internal storage this isn't a problem um, but make sure if you have a Vita 1K you remove the memory card once you've rebooted it and removed the, re the memory card, we're going to wait for this to reboot real quick, but that should be it. I'll go ahead and go into storage and show you guys that the SD card is actually working and I now have 64 gigs of storage. Sorry about that, I had to reset up my Vita recording. Once your Vita is actually turned on this time, we're going to unlock it and I'm going to go to settings just to show you guys that the memory card is working. I do not have an official Sony memory card in, in here right now. Mine was only 8 gigabytes. And if we go to system, system information, you will see that we now have 57 gigabytes of free space out of 58. The only reason it's not the full 64 is because when you format uh, any sort of drive, you lose a little bit of capacity. But we effectively have 64 gigabytes of storage now. So your SD to Vita should be set up, and that was actually all of it. So now you can go ahead and plug your SD card back into your PC and copy over games or do whatever you need to do. But I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If there was any sort of confusion or you guys have any issues with this, let me know and we'll go ahead and get that fixed. Um, just let me know in the comments or join the Creation Discord server and I'll be able to help you out there. But I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial, and I hope you guys have a good day. See you later.